Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, very good afternoon to you. Um, I just would like to spend a few minutes talking to you about uh, tidal energy and our project to develop and demonstrate a tidal stream uh, generating device um, in Pembrokeshire. Um, hopefully, all be well this time next year. Um, the First Minister in his address mentioned Tidal Energy Limited being the beneficiary of the 6.4 million grant, which is actually sourced from the European Regional Development Fund. And on a small scale, um, I would like to present to you what is a embryonic uh, public-private uh, agreement and participation in this project as we try to get tidal stream generation off the ground. So I'm going to just spend a little bit of time talking about the project, what we're doing, and, um, and how I really see it's a, an opportunity for Wales in the, in the longer term. So first of all, <clears throat> as far as tidal stream resource is concerned, there are a number of sites around the coastline of the UK where the resource is sufficiently attractive for generation to be a realistic prospect. We are particularly interested in Wales, in Pembrokeshire, that's where our project is focused, but there is another area to the north around Anglesey, around the Skerries, um, where other developments may well take place. So it is a resource, and one of the big advantages of tidal stream generation is it is entirely predictable. But it is challenging, it's a tough environment, and companies like ours have really got to demonstrate that it's a practical proposition before we get to commercial scale. Our project uh, focused down off the west coast, down on the southwest, Pembrokeshire, just off the uh, way, a couple of two or three miles, uh, St. David's, in Ramsey Sound. Um, in the centre of the circle there, uh, at the top of Ramsey Sound, between the mainland and the island, is the spot where our single prototype unit will be installed. Uh, we have a grid connection, so we will be able to demonstrate that we can generate power and feed it into the grid. The power coming ashore, uh, at the end of that curvy line on there, up by the St. David's lifeboat station. But this is, as I say, a tough environment. Um, ideally, we would like a perfect laminar flow of tidal currents. Um, that's the optimum opportunity for generating power. But waves and turbulence also have serious effects on the ability to generate power. And more importantly, to make the device capable of withstanding those forces. And this little picture down here on the right just shows you the sort of conditions that can prevail in Ramsey Sound um, on a calm day. Um, the device will be totally submerged at about 30, just over 30 metres in depth and so will not present itself as a navigational hazard. And as I say, that subsea cable links it into shore uh, alongside the, uh, the lifeboat station. But it's a long haul. Our work actually started 10 years ago now when Richard Eyre, uh, our founder, still technical director to the company, actually secured some money from the Welsh Assembly Government at that time, um, which was administered by the parts of the, the uh, Pembrokeshire National Park Authority to allow Richard to do his first tests with this five metre diameter concept turbine. And um, you, you, you could, Richard's the chap in blue on the right there, and just above and to the right of his head is a light bulb. And this five metre turbine lit that light bulb, so he was really pleased about that. But, <laughs> but, but, but the disadvantage was that there was a lot of vibration from that device being in the water in these strong tidal currents. Anyway, it was sufficiently encouraging for him to decide that there was something in this, and he carried on his work. He carried on his work through uh, five or six years, bumbling along the bottom. Uh, there's so many puns in this game, I apologise. Um, before, eventually, uh, in 2008, Eco2, um, a, a well-known renewable energy company here in Wales, based in Cardiff, 
um, decided to uh, take an interest and they put some seed capital, £150,000 worth of seed capital, into the project, which was matched by a low carbon entity affiliated to the University of East Anglia, actually in this case, Carbon Connections Limited. And between them, they started off the project in, um, in, a, uh, in, some, in some anger. And the Eco2 investment has now risen to just over £2 million. Pounds. And from that five metre turbine, we've got to something which now looks like this. And this is the current general arrangement drawing for the device that we will be installing in Ramsey uh, next year. It's, um, as you see, three 400 kilowatt turbines, so the single unit has a total capacity of 1.2 megawatts, but it's big, it's heavy, it's robust, it's not sexy at all, because it has to withstand those really uh, tough environmental conditions that it's going to go in. It's 36 meters across the side of the triangle, um, from the foot to the top dead center of rotation of the turbine, it's 20 meters. Those turbine the turbine diameter themselves are each 15 meters. And it weighs in air about 350 tons. So it's a big beast that we have to get in the water. But it's not only our work, it's not only about getting it into the water. We are, in Pembrokeshire, operating in an extremely sensitive environmental uh, area. It's a marine special area of conservation. And we have done a lot of work on the potential environmental impact and the assessment and the scoping of the environmental analysis that we have done and the applications that we made in securing the operating consent to put the device in the water next year. So we did a lot of work on all these issues which you see listed here in the EIA and really during the course of our discussions with the regulators and with the principal consultees, uh, the Countryside Council for Wales, our, our focus has really much uh, has, has centred on potential interference with sea mammals given that Ramsey Island itself, on the other side of the channel there, is a colony is colonised by grey seals at this time of the year, uh, pupping season, there will be something like three to four thousand grey seals on the island. And the upper picture shows harbour porpoise. They regularly transit through Ramsey Sound. And what we have to demonstrate is that our device, in, <coughs> in its introduction to this environment, will have no impact on the behaviour, disturbance, or even fatally injuring animals due to the rotation of turbines. It's a big issue. And another one, down, just to touch on, down at the, the, the bottom of this list, the socio-economic aspect of this. From the, foot, from the slipway of the St. David's lifeboat station, there are something like 50,000 boat passenger trips per year to go and look at the wildlife around Ramsey Island. And if our device goes in there and it scares the animals away, that's going to have a massive effect on the local <coughs> industries um, which support the tourism aspect of uh, local industry. So it's a big generic question, not only about generating power, but what might be the consequences of us so doing. And so working with the regulators and working with CCW, we have formulated a plan on how we're going to do this. In terms of the integration of effort on the planning side, the planning aspects and the consenting approach we had to take, there are um, devolved authorities to the Welsh Government, but principally the Electricity Act, Section 36 of the Electricity Act that we needed as an operating licence for a off uh, for a offshore energy uh, energy unit of greater than one megawatt has to come from DEC in London. Now we had to go through the same process there as developers looking to build a 350, 500 megawatt offshore wind farm. 
for our little one megawatt device. But anyway, we, we've done it, and we got consents um, from the Secretary of State in March, and they came together with the devolved authorities' um, consents for the Food and Environmental Protection Act, the Coastal Protection Act, and crucially, um, given the protected species um, that I've mentioned, grey seal and uh, harbour porpoise, the European Protected Species Licence came from the Welsh Government. There is a lot of interest in the project, and it has triggered support for us from Carbon Trust. In addition to the finance that we've secured from the Welsh Government, or the REF, ERDF money through the Welsh Government, we've also managed to secure uh, just under £400,000 worth of funding from the Carbon Trust to help us with our monitoring equipment that we are going to install on the device and around it to just to see how it might impact on the environment. So it's a big project, not only for us, but also for the environmental concerns, and we're getting a lot of support in taking our work forward in that respect. So where is our programme? Um, well, the technical design is ready to go. We're actually starting the procurement process now to build the device. We are continuing with all with a number of site surveys and environmental surveys. Those that work continues. We've engaged locally with the St. David's community in a number of public exhibitions. We have the Crown Estate lease for the work that we for the seabed where we, we, are, we are working. Um, and then all being well, we will be installing the device at the end of the summer next year. Um, and we then have a one-year trial to test the device before we remove it in 2013. So it is a test case for Wales, and it does align with the Ministerial Policy Statement from July 2009. I think it forms potentially a part of the picture of how Wales is going to deliver its renewable energy targets in the longer term. This is a pioneering prototype demonstration for tidal stream in Wales. It's showing this cooperation between the private sector and the public sector. Our £6.4 million from the Welsh European Funding Office has been match funded by our shareholders, Eco2. It is a key opportunity to examine the environmental impact and we've had really tremendous cooperation with the regulators and with CCW and the principal consultees in bringing the project to this level. And we are seeking to establish regional economic benefit by hopefully enabling the local supply chain in the delivery of the device. We've got cooperation going on with Cardiff and Swansea universities at the very least as far as developing R&D excellence is concerned. So really it is a project which sets the scene for a really strong expansion of tidal stream energy in Wales. I hope this has been um, an upbeat message because given the difficulties that a lot of you face here on the wind side uh, in Wales, I think because we have, we have perhaps the advantage that we're in at the beginning of the tidal stream and marine renewable energy in Wales, we have the opportunity to develop the industry as, as we would wish to see it going forward. It's early days and it's up to us to be able to prove that we can make this thing work and also that it has no adverse impact on the environment. And in so doing, I hope this test case for Wales is going to be a really successful story for Wales. Thank you.